It's a beautiful day. We're out at Canyon Lake in Arizona. There's a lot of people around, a lot of cars and boats and ducks. And we thought we'd just take a little bit of time and answer some of the questions that have been coming in. We've been getting quite a few lately. Yeah, and so if we don't get to yours in this video, we'll continue to do these videos from time to time and hopefully get to all the questions. One question that's come in is, would we get a smaller rig if we could do it all over again? We have a 40-foot fifth wheel now, and the question is, would we get something smaller? <laughs> well, I don't think that I would get a smaller fifth wheel because even in the 40 foot when we're staying somewhere I mean I, I could use a little bit more room sometimes it <laughs> seems like uh, but you know you can you can make do with what you have but I think the only way that I would really want a smaller rig is if I were doing something quite differently for example if we had a, a home somewhere or uh, we had our stationary you know fifth wheel somewhere that we only took out for certain trips it would be nice to maybe have like a little class B or something or, like yeah, that that we could that. Mm -hmm. ride around the country and just take little uh, excursions and go out and, and use that and we could certainly make do with less space but for living full-time on a regular ongoing basis I think I appreciate every bit of the 40 feet. Yeah, every bit. Because um, we definitely wouldn't have gone anywhere under 36 feet and at that you're not really gaining any more as far as campgrounds that you'd fit into or whatever but you're losing that four feet of living space so I think the 40 foot works good for us. Yeah and everywhere that we've been dry camping it's never an issue for those right. types of locations and there there have been some parks but as we said in other videos those those parks really weren't something that we really wanted to go to <laughs> anyway and we found uh, other options in those areas so it all works out in terms of that I mean yeah would it be easier to maneuver something smaller yeah but I don't think a 36 to a 40 foot is going to make really a big make difference. really make that big of a difference no yeah, and then you so. just be losing the living space when you're stationary so yeah. I think we'd go with the same size. Yeah definitely. So another question is did what we did before prepare us for RV living? And I'd say it, it made us want to do RV living because yeah. we worked at home for a long time yeah. and it made us really want to get out and see things and meet people and do something different. Yeah, and I'd say pretty much anything anyone's done in the past prepares them for the future, good or bad, or directly or indirectly. But yeah, specifically I'd say it probably did because we always had an entrepreneurial and an adventurous spirit about us. We would kind of set our own course for work and set our own course for play. So that's kind of what we're doing now. So I'd say, yeah, it, it kind of did. But I think that when you venture out and try new things, as long as you stick with it and you give it your all, things tend to fall into place and you end up doing well at it if you're really into it. Yeah. Another question that pops up a lot is how do we connect to the internet? How do we get internet access? And I think that's a big question for a lot of people getting into RVing because they're going to leave that home connection and venture out and they wonder how are you going to get internet wherever you're at? Well, um, we didn't take what I think is uh, one of the, the prominent ways that people getting into RVing do like watch videos and then go out and buy all the things or get the things <laughs> that people suggested boosters and all these things to put on the rig we actually kind of have been taking it as we go along to see what our travel habits would bring us and for the most part I'd say we've had decent internet uh, access one way or the other I mean a lot of the parks that say that they had access to the internet or Wi-Fi was not good Wi-Fi. I no, mean, you, not at all. You know, you could barely pull up we, web pages. So yeah, but we always have our um, phone hotspot hot spot yeah. that we can rely on, and that you can adjust kind of on the fly if you find that you need more, more data, data or less data. You can adjust it that way. And if we're um, in some place that we're going to be for an extended period of time, we will just uh, get a month-to-month -month hookup on their um, whatever internet service, service yeah, that it, they have locally in the area. It, it seems that 
sometimes you can get a monthly rate at a place with no contract even if you're only going to be there a week or four days that <laughs> yeah. could actually even be as much as it would be to just to, buy some data. buy data so yeah. it, you know we just kind of weigh that out we have a verizon hotspot by the way that's what we use mm -hmm. we've also stayed at parks where there was kind of uh i guess subpar uh internet access so we'd go out to the laundromat or someplace or you know library or something and right. use the local internet but we we've done pretty well um in the places in national parks or different places that we've been that didn't have great uh internet access we would just uh, kind of pile up our, <laughs> our duties and videos or whatever we yeah. had to do and then when we got to some then we we'd use it then yeah. and, and we, we can, don't really we can, miss it that yeah, we much can, we for can pretty a few much days. always get it on the phone if that, yeah. that's a, the last resort we can pretty yeah, much yeah we can do that. check important things uh, over our phone most of the time mm -hmm. one booster that i i did get which is uh a cheap thing I'll put a, a link in the description I got a cheap little I don't know if it's like $30 or something maybe 50 at the most a little booster that I attach to the laptop and it allows me to pick up uh, like weak uh, Wi-Fi signals in a park and stuff and that has been actually yeah. pretty good it's helped a lot I'll, I'll put a link in the description of that but yeah, anyway so we just kind of yeah you know, internet uh, we're, we're getting it somehow so. <laughs> yeah, everywhere we go so a question I thought was kind of interesting is someone asked do you cut your own hair and the answer for me is no I have had Bernie trim it a time or two usually since I just get it trimmed from time to time and it only takes about five minutes I wait for a sale at Great Clips or Supercuts or someplace and just go in and have them cut it and not that big a deal <laughs> yeah and I've I don't cut my own hair I, I wouldn't mind cutting my own hair if I could see behind my head really well but I'm you know I've seen a couple gadgets too that you can use and kind of trim the back and all this kind of stuff but I, I just don't trust that I'm, I'm kind of I guess particular about, about my hair I just like it to be neat and I do have a full, full head of hair underneath this hat but I'm not gonna take it off now because it's drenched with sweat in the hot Arizona Sun but anyway, no, I don't cut mine. Uh, I have been getting a haircut by the same lady for about 15 years prior to embarking on this uh, lifestyle, and I miss her dearly. She did a great job. I've had a little uh, bit of uh, botched uh, haircuts <laughs> uh, the last couple times at places. But anyway, no, I don't cut it, and we just typically just try to find someone to cut it for us periodically. Fortunately, I only get it cut about every six weeks I guess or so six yeah, to eight and weeks. I only get mine every probably four to six months so yeah. it's not really a big problem yeah. for us. by the way that is a really good way to save some money if you can cut your own yeah. hair and also if you could cut other, other RVers hair, hair yeah. RVers hair yeah keep that in mind <laughs> someone asked us what is the best time to visit the Oregon coast well <laughs> let's see now we've We've gone over there as early as May. I don't really recommend it. It can be rainy and pretty sketchy yeah. in May. However, the end of May, the beginning of June, if it's a good year and you've been watching the weather, it could be a lot of wildflowers and it can be quite nice. But overall, I'd probably pick, I guess, August, if you don't mind crowds, would be, uh, and it's mm -hmm. not very crowded in, in all the cities along the coast. It's usually probably the northern things like yeah. seaside and cannon beach and that type of thing yeah are especially on weekends be, yeah. if you can go during the week that's even better i guess mm -hmm. i would probably even pick uh, september after labor day you got the everyone's gone back to school and there's going to be less crowds and it. it's really good there and surprisingly We've even went to the coast on the weekends as late as November. Yeah, And it, while it wasn't that warm, it, it, it was definitely we got some beautiful yeah. sunny days. And uh, if you're doing photography on the coast, there's not a lot of deciduous uh, growth over there. It's a lot of evergreen type things. So it's going to kind of look about the same in your mm. pictures anyway. Whereas if you go inland, uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of... Uh, 
loss on the, the, the leaves and things like that mm -hmm. and it's just going to look gray and gloomy but the, yeah. the coast is pretty much going to look the same so yeah. I'd say August and, and September. August and September. September is usually really good weather in Oregon so yeah, I September agree. is good in the winter the good thing about visiting in the winter is that if there's a storm or something you can get some great waves and things like that if you don't mind the cold and the wind it's beautiful but uh, it has its own beauty any time of the year but yeah, I'd have to agree August, September would probably yeah. be my favorite. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we were asked if we have further insulated our RV. And it, yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that we do use uh, the Reflectix insulative um, material, material the in the windows. And we did spray some foam in the underneath, uh, some holes that we found, and also where the pipes go out under the sink, we made sure that that was um, secure yeah. and that there was a draft that was coming in there. Uh, if we stayed in Oregon or in a cold weather situation in the winter time, then yeah, we probably would do a, more a lot skirting more skirting and things like that. If we were going to be stationary during the winter, I mean, the best insulation is to follow the sun. Exactly. You know? And and then you don't want to you don't want to be in it too hot or too cold. I don't feel like an RV is really made for extreme cold or extreme heat. I, I don't care what how much you spend on, right. on the rigs, almost anyway, yeah. within reason. Yeah. Uh, they're much. just not made for those types of extremes. But we've done quite well. I mean, we've been down in the 20s. I don't know if we've been in the teens with it. And we've certainly been up over 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with it. But the Reflectex has actually been really good in the winter and the summer. Yes. Uh, and that's essentially just what mylar material mm -hmm. uh, sandwiching some fine bubble wrap. And you can, I'll put a link to where you can get that in the description. But anyway, we put that on the windows. We've, like you said, we've sprayed underneath some of the cracks uh, with uh, that great stuff foam spray. I'll put a link to that if you don't know what that is. Uh, and that's only because we were down there uh, having some valves worked on to replace some valves so we decided to go ahead and just seal up anything that we could see while we were down there. And as you mentioned we definitely sealed up uh, where the pipes come up underneath for the, the sinks. Yeah. Uh, those I would recommend that everyone follow all that stuff because drafts can come in there even mice can come in yeah. that way so you don't want any of that <laughs> that's true yeah so someone asked if we consider the outdoors as an extension of our RV space and I'd say yeah in some ways we do because you know someone ask me one time you know do you get cramped in there or whatever and we, we really don't I mean I guess sometimes there's little little times when you feel a little bit like you could use a little bit more space but uh, yes I do feel like the outdoors is an extension we we're outdoors a lot more than what we were when we had the home we thought we were <laughs> Uh, with a house, we thought we were outside a lot, you know, either yeah. in the yard or out doing things. Right, and with an RV, you can follow the weather. So if you've always got good weather, that means you can always go outside, go places, uh, go for a hike, uh, you know, eat outside. A lot of different things that you don't uh, n maybe necessarily do in your house because you have half a year yeah. that's cold or snowy or yeah. windy or something. Well, and it's it's kind of like, not quite, but something like uh, using a hotel. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not totally like that because this is our home. But uh, as in using a hotel, you would uh, be outside more. You probably wouldn't yeah. hang around in the hotel room. You're out right. at, at whatever amusement or adventure that you're on. And so we kind of feel like that in the RV, at least uh, a, a couple years into this, yeah. we feel that way. And so, yeah, I would, I would definitely consider the outside as some, a lot of our space. And just to add on that, I kind of feel like, you know, there was times when I wanted to own, you know, a decent sized piece of land or whatever. And when we started looking into that, there was a lot of expenses involved, just getting services out to it or trying to get off grid, you know, the expenses involved with that. So um, I started considering all of the land ours and I don't mean it as bad as it sounds I just mean like if we want beachfront property we go to the beach and we just have that if we want to go to the mountains we go to the mountains the desert whatever and so it it does put us in proximity to all of those outdoor 
type of adventures that we like so dearly. Yeah, and I love it. Me too. <laughs> Those were answers to some of the questions that we've been getting. And as Susan said, we plan on doing future question and answer videos. So if we haven't answered your question yet, we're likely to get to it in an upcoming video. And if you have a new question, feel free to ask it in the comment section to this video. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.